Hello, good evening. Welcome to our front. In less than two hours from now, the March Away Test Cars of the Revolution, the second in our series of special assignments that focus on crimes that shook the nation, will be airing. Ahead of that, though, I have in studio with me a guest who is special because he witnessed a very important episode in our history. The execution of six generals on a single day of 26th of June in the year 1979. That execution is much talked about, but many really saw what really happened. We we'll bring you the blow-by-blow -blow account from a man who saw it when he was on his way to work. Also, the former President Rawlings, in his statement in response to Major Reader about the comments he made on this show, mentioned Sergeant Aloga Akatapori. Sergeant Aloga Akatapori is our guest on Affront today too. And he'll be surely be responding to what the former President Rawlings said. First, let me welcome Mr. Bob Kumsen. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Mr. Bob Kumsen used to work with the State Insurance Corporation then. Now we call this company, so SIC. And uh, you, you, you were a chairman at the time. Yes, I was. Brilliant. I, I'll be coming to that much detail. You, if you give me a second, I can now go to join, joining us on the Skype now is Sergeant Aloga Akatapori retired. You welcome, sir, to Affront. Thank you. I hope you are doing well, sir. Yeah. <laughs> So Five recently, days. there was an advice to Major Reader not to act like your kind. Those who have been fabricating history and be reporting your own versions contrary to what the facts are, according to the former president, Jerry John Rawlings. You saw that statement. What was your initial reaction to that statement? I was very sad. And uh, I could that uh, the statement was actually from him. I had to ring around uh, to find out whether it was genuine. Uh, so my reaction was that of sadness. All that I wanted to do was to respond to uh, you know, the murder of the judge because he has not done it yet. And uh, his statement, which he came out on the 2nd of July, is still in his name. And uh, he hasn't... Uh, I told us whether he feels stands by that uh, uh, statement on the 2nd of July 19th or not. So, in many ways, I was giving him an opportunity to either retract it to explain it, because it was evidently false. He knew everything that had happened, uh, that it was with the troops in the barracks, uh, those uh, uh, soldiers that were done, and not any enemies of the revolution. To all of this is that apparently um, you have been making false claims about him. You have been saying things that Sorry, have no um, verification. What a small glitch here. If you can hear me, sir. Yes. What I'm trying to ask is that the former president Rollins is very clear in his mind that you've been making false statements about him and that you've been engaging in fabrications that are aimed at tarnishing his image. Is this I've correct? I've got a bad. So I'm trying to. Clear it a bit. Okay. It's Certainly. Um, if you're able to clear that up with um, the Sergeant Aloga Katapari retired, I should be able to get some clarity. Uh, I'm, I'm told that you are fine and you can join us now. You will come back, yeah. sir. I, I'm, I'm asking the question because the claim from the former president is that you and others, they mentioned, uh, he mentioned the name of uh, Matthew Adabuga. He also mentioned the name of Boatijan. You have been very consistent in your attack on him by fabricating stories. Is this true? Uh, none of the things I said about him are fabricated. You see, one of the things he insinuated was that uh, I was a mercenary. You see, you have to think about it carefully. Uh, uh, who would pay me to ask him those questions. Is it uh, NPP or NDC? It doesn't make sense. You see, because these parties 
or rather everybody kept quiet. Because look, if any of them should try and encourage me to uh, say anything about Rawlings, about the murder of the judges, the first thing I would demand is for them to reinvestigate the whole affair. And none of them, they are all scared. They wouldn't go there. So no one can pay me to uh, make a demand on Robbins to speak the truth. After all, he is a property and accountability champion. He should speak the truth. Now, the, the clarification in this case is that you ask questions, but do you also seem to have pointed fingers at him when it comes to the murder of the judges? Yes. Logically, that is the lo look. It's not only me. Look at the NRC. Logically, it has to be him. You see, if he didn't uh, pull the trigger, he gave instructions. Because, look, he lied on the 2nd of July that he didn't know about the murders when he knew. Okay, that's one. Number two, when the CDS approached him about the murder of the judges, he immediately called Amatekwe and told Amatekwe to go and release them. Upon which Amatekwe told him, we have finished them. For Amatekwe to be able to say that we have finished them, meant that there was irritation on his part that you you know what has happened and you are still asking me if Amat uh, did not uh, if he did not if Rollins did not know Amat would not have answered in public that he had finished it's just logical so look I have heard that that statement of the second of July was written to him by his cousin yeah, his cousins and friends were around the PNP. Yeah, there was Chachu there, and there was Kojochi and Chikata there, and some other friends of his. Was it any of his who wrote a statement in bed? He should come out and tell her. Now, I, I, I don't get him. Okay, so so I, I get your point on that basis. I mean, the, the understanding was that rather than point fingers at him, you and others are the cowards in this case. You are the one, for example, you individually run away from when the kitchen was too hot from the fifth battalion. You have no moral authority to make claims about former President Rawlings. When, when the situation has got very heated, you left the kitchen. Listen, the only cowardly act that I performed was not to steal Ghana's money. I'm scared of stealing people's money. I'm scared of taking five million from Abacha. I'm stealing from taking 120 government land in the name of a fake trust. But if that you answer the I'm question scared. about leaving the 5 BN. Look, on that day, at dawn, I'm talking of a D day plus one. Okay. Now, I had an argument with some other soldiers. Rollins had, I had not seen Rollins for about a week prior to the, uh, to D Day. The plan was that if I didn't turn up, then D Day was on. If I turned up, then I would change the date because I was the one who controlled when the strike would take place or not. So anytime they saw me in Jerry's house, there was a problem. So on this occasion, I didn't come back for about a week. So DJ went ahead, each hour went on. Then at dawn, I had my army with some other troops in 5 p.m. On my way there, I saw these Mowaks and I waved them down. Jerry turned. Uh, to be inside one of them with, uh, you know, uh, Adabuga, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jiwa, uh, uh, Eric, and uh, Ajeku, uh, and some other uh, troops. So I went into the Mowak, and then we kept driving around, and I beat Rawlings on what had happened uh, during the uh, previous week. 
Then I asked to be dropped up at 5B and guard room, which was another RV. You understand? So I was dropped up there, and then they left. What is this thing about me be, having to be at 5B uh, guard room? It doesn't make sense. Look, what is more bold in, <laughs> in, in, in the Mowak? I was driving up and down, you know, from uh, uh, the officer's mess to uh, Burma Hall to Air Force, all around the barrack. He thinks that's how you, you put the crew. He doesn't know what happened on the ground. And he comes to talk this rubbish. In any case, what did they ask me about? Is he, is, is he a mouse or a man? It, what if bothering him so much? He should have asked me. He's never asked me. The guy is a coward. He should have asked me. I mean, this, this sounds to me more like, so how come a man you also describe as a coward became the leader of the AFRC? Look, the thing is that Jerry had uh, established himself uh, 50 day accidental or whatever. You have to give that to him. That statement he made about uh, he taking uh, ownership of the, uh, uh, the events of 50 May endeared him very well to all of us, which is why we need him. But it doesn't mean that he is a Rambo. Nobody can Rambo in a coup. It doesn't happen. And there are so many faces to uh, affront to uh, a revolution or a coup that he should stop calling other people cowards just because they were not in the Mowak with him. It doesn't make sense. It just tells you that he does not know half of how this revolution was done. He doesn't. Now, there's a clarification I seek from you on this matter. That clarification is basically about what will be the end game in this case. So we've had June 4th, 1979. We've had also 31st December, 1981. These were supposed to be life-changing, probity, accountability, and having to uphold the highest standards in governance in this state. Did all of these that you actively participate in show the needed results from where you sit? Look, this program that you are running, it would never have been necessary if the aims of the revolution had been achieved. It turns out that Rawlings and his cousins are now sitting pretty on tons of money, lands, bank accounts, uh, 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 banks, oil block. There are children in private schools abroad. How can that be the end result of the revolution? That was not what this was about. And yet that was the end result. So the questions have to be asked. That is the reason why it is so painful that so many people got hurt and the whole country has got nothing out of it. Only Rollins and his cousins and his friends. It's not fair. And that is why the questions have to be asked. Rollins must go on trial. It doesn't I mean, matter if I'm brought in also. And, and that is basically indicting your very good self too. Yes. Because look, the thing is, that was not the aim of the revolution. You understand? Yes, if, because it will be for the good of the country. We, we cannot just uh, allow that to happen. It's not too and late. But when Wallace is not uh, uh, coming to apologize, he has to apologize. Look, he's not even taking responsibility for the execution of the, of the heads of states. He claims that we forced him to kill these generals. That blood must flow from students. Look, Jerry uh, killed uh, people on the 12th of July, 1993. 12th of July, 1993, 12 people were executed in his home. One year after he had become president of the fourth republic. What did he have to do that? So that one, 
Was it uh, we, the young soldiers and the students who uh, asked him to kill them? He's just a blood testing vampire. No, I, 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 forgive me, but those are very strong words. And I, I would plead with you to exercise some patience. My question was about whether or not we've succeeded in achieving the things that we said we would do with the revolution. You don't believe anything at all has been achieved. At least we don't have Kalabuli today. At least we don't have a price control regime today. At least some of these systems that used to be the case are no longer what's happening now. Uh, you see, it's true that uh, uh, Kalabuli, Kalabuli was to do with shortages and hoarding, you see. But at least if you got the goods, you got them at a, a, a control price. So you have to take a pick. You have to take your pick. Okay. So today, look at the price of the, uh, uh, of the of the city versus the dollar. That time, with uh, uh, the controls, it was one to one almost. So there are there are benefits today. All that we do is to import everything. But you can't blame former President Rollins for this. I mean, he's not in charge. He's not been in charge for a very long time. All of the fundamentals of the economy has very little to do with him. He cannot be held responsible for it. <laughs> Look, uh, what has happened was that, it, and that is why we fell out. The IMF put in a structure for them. And instead of them to resist it, like a champion did, like Kwame Nkrumah did, so that everything will be uh, homegrown, they opted for, you know, this uh, laissez fair economics, they brought in this uh, uh, policy. And uh, basically, that's where we are. And uh, no one can cheat from it. And then the other problem that we have is the political group cannot come together to solve any problem because of the bipartisan politics. You see, if today Nana wants to adopt a certain policy, the NDC is opposite whether it is right or wrong. And the same way, if Domahama comes out with plans now, it is the same way uh, Nana will sabotage him. So look, Achampong's idea of a uh, uh, union government was not such a bad idea. Well, I, 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 I don't know about that, but maybe the final question I'm asking you on this is, how do we forge a way forward? Is there ever a time you believe when we want to put all of this to rest, what should happen? Is it's going we want to, be to put the issue issues it. surrounding June 4th, the 31st um, December to rest, what should happen? You see, I think that uh, the, uh, the, the, the thing is with Rawlings. Rawlings has to come out, make a national broadcast, and apologize unconditionally. Look, if he wants, some of us are prepared to put everything aside and come and stand by his side so that he will apologize and some new mentor will join him. So we apologize because we set up to achieve a set of some goals and it didn't happen. Instead, we have brought on a, a huge problem on track. You have to apologize. I want to believe die. that I want to believe that this evening and in the next 90 minutes, you'll be staying tuned and watching the scars of the revolution. Of course, I, 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 uh, you know, I, I, I must apologize on my own behalf and on behalf of the young soldiers that uh, I was leading. This is not what we, uh, it was aimed at, and it was difficult to control the situation. We had no mobile phones those days. People were fighting their own little battles all over the country. Wherever we heard that this was, we went there to and solve the issue. Look, I drove one day from dawn to the evening to solve a problem in Upper East, where the Bugre and the, the current Hamidu, uh, 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 you know, I, I'm talking about Amidu with the, uh, the special prosecutor. Okay. You see? So, look, it is a question of, it was uncontrollable. But I think that we should take responsibility because we unleashed it. It's just like today, if anything happens, it's going to be worse. You see, but, so you have to control it. If you cannot control it, don't start it. 
Sergeant Daniel Aloga Katapori, I'm just hoping that we could speak to you after you have finished watching the scars of the revolution. Maybe th th that would be a wonderful time to kill it off from there. But for now, we appreciate your time so much for joining us from your home in London. We appreciate your time, sir. Well, folks, we just had a brief interaction there with Sergeant Daniel Aloga Katapori there. In studio, I did tell you about Mr. Bob Kumsen. And Mr. Bob Kumsen witnessed something that was very horrific in our history. The execution or the firing squad of the six generals that happened on June 26, 1979. You're welcome again, sir. Thank you. Now, I want you to be able to tell me, so where were you going when you saw this incident happen? Well, I was, I was living with my big sister in Tema, and mm -hmm. I was working at um, State Insurance Corporation. Okay. At that time, everybody used the beach road because it took only 20 minutes from Tema to Accra. Now, on that day, when I got to uh, The Point, there was a popular chicken restaurant called The Point, okay. where the Nungwa barrier mm. used to be. We just noticed that the traffic had slowed down uncharacteristically. So we kept on moving at a very slow pace, mm -hmm. slow pace, slow pace, until when we got to the military academy, we saw that the traffic had stopped. So I was going to work that morning. In the morning? In the morning. You got out of the car, did you, you, need, need, you needed to watch what was happening? Yes. In fact, when the traffic stopped at that time, we didn't know what was happening. Oh, I see. All we saw, it was about 9.30 in the morning. Okay. Some people say at dawn. Okay. It wasn't dawn. It was not dawn. No, it was 9.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. the, um, ten days before, um, General June 16th. Then our champion and the took had been yes. killed. Mm -hmm. That was at dawn. Okay. But it was shown on television in the evening. Oh, I see. Yes. But at this one was about 9.30. What we, we saw that something was about to happen because the soldier, there were soldiers who were moving up and down the road, okay. singing those songs they used to sing. Okay. They didn't go in nowhere. Mm -hmm. They just move up and move down, move up and move down. Oh, okay. Yeah. So oh. at that time, we were sitting in our cars. I see. Until later. All right. So what did you see? What we saw was that there was a flurry of activity. Mm -hmm. um, when a helicopter hovered around the sky, and then there was a flurry of activity. And then we saw a convoy of military vehicles led by armored cars and Land Rovers. And then we saw this big truck in the middle. Okay. Yes. And then it got there just at the entry of the firing range. Mm -hmm. And then it entered. It entered the range. And then we saw about six men in the truck. And then they were told to come down. And they all came down. Entered um, a tent which had been built on the right side. And then a firing range with six um, sticks oh, okay. facing the tent. Mm. So they got down. They were wearing um, something like pajamas, okay. like the karate mm -hmm. uniform, yellowish, orange. Okay, the remember. people who were to be executed. To be executed. I, I must say that at that time, nobody knew the personalities who were going to be executed. It was not clear. It, it, no, no. If, I, if somebody says he saw it from the road, I don't think it's true. Oh, okay. Yeah, because nobody could tell who and who they were. More, moreover, they were the way they were dressed. So they came down, went briefly into the tent, and then they were marched out of the tent and tied to the sticks. Mm. Yeah. So. You were in the car with other people? No, I was alone. But yeah, there were okay. so many cars. Cars that were lined up there. And we had stopped. You basically stopped moving? Stopped. No car moved. At least not uh, about... No, no car moved. From where we were standing to about where Labadi Beach Hotel is now. I think everybody, every car had stopped. All right. So they matched them. Did they tie them to these sticks? They tied them to the sticks. One was virtually dragged. He could not walk. He had broken okay. down. Okay. 
We later learned it was General Kote. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was virtually dragged to the sticks. And then mm -hmm. the six of them were tied up. Were they shot at the same time? They were shot at the same time. The, I think they have a commander. So the six um, soldiers who were holding the rifles came out of the tent. And then they were given a command. And then they started shooting. And you witnessed this? I witnessed this. How did you feel? <laughs> Um, if you ask me, I mean, I, I was obviously sad to see men being shot. That was the first time you were seeing a firing squad? No, the first time was on television. The okay. Previous. And <laughs> yes, I remember sister. my big sister, when, when they announced on GBC TV, okay. they announced that two generals were shot this morning. Mm -hmm. We all thought it was just going to be a news item. Okay. And then the picture started showing. And I remember my big sister said, Hey, what we want to me as in Papa will be your deal with TV. Oh, Which means these people are very wicked. Are they going to show, show this on it, yeah. TV? Because we had heard it in the morning. Mm -hmm. And we were now going to see it on television. And, and it was live for it you was, to It see was live. When you watched it. When we watched. So this one, they were all shot at the same time. I see. Um, I think. The Major General Noeva is my child, Bwachi. Mm -hmm. I think uh, whoever was shooting him misfired because okay. it looked like the bullet had torn the skin. No, the, the rope. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he, he, he just slammed a bit, mm -hmm. but he looked to be alive. Okay. And then the shooting continued till he. He uh, finally yes. uh, gave up. Yes. Did it take long for them to die? Actually, for this incident, did it take a very long time? No, it didn't take a very long time, except <clears throat> for some drama at the tail end of the um, shooting. When the, the, the sex had been shot and the squad turned back to go into the tent. The, the man at the very beginning, that is from the roadside, okay. was about 500 meters to the, um, to the range. Mm -hmm. This very tall man raised his head again. I mean, from the slump, he raised his head. And then you, the crowd, I don't know what happened to the crowd. I think all this revolutionary frenzy had gotten into people. The crowd started shouting in Ga. Oh, I see. Yes. I said he's not he's dead. He's not yet. dead. Because they were walking away. Mm -hmm. So the soldiers turned back to see what was happening. Because they, they were moving into the tent. And then the commander stopped and called one of them and then he went to stand in front of this man and then shot um, another round of about six bullets into him. Wow. Yes. And then he slammed again and then they stood there for some time and then they were moving away. And then he raised his head again and I mean, pushed out his chest. Then the crowd shouted again, So the commander himself came back, pulled a pistol from his hip, and then shot about four bullets into him. At that time, he slumped and never raised his head again. We later learned that this was General Akwesia Mangwa Afrifa. Afrifa. Yes. Yeah, I have heard and I've read the account of 
just I, who was with the GNA at the time, mm -hmm. who reported that particular incident. He makes reference to that same, is, I mean, the number of times they had to consistently yeah. deliver bullets into the body of the general before he finally gave up the coast yeah. in the process of doing so. Yeah. In fact, it even talks about he basically moving. No, he didn't move. I he, he just raised his head okay. the first time, mm -hmm. stood erect like okay. a soldier. Mm -hmm. And then the second uh, round went. Mm -hmm. Then f in the final time, he raised his head and then bare his chest like that. So these eyewitnesses, where were they from? They were normal commuters on the road. So, you, of course, this uh, is just by the roadside. So yes. you could see it. You, you could it, see it. Everybody was invited to watch. Yes. And normally, um, the, for, with their Champon and Utuka cases, mm -hmm. they were in a tent, and they were shooting from the tent. Oh, the but military the, people? Yes. But this one, they came out of the tent mm -hmm. and faced them. Oh, and okay. Shot. Yes. They, they, when they aligned them up, they came up to actually face them yes. and, and shoot them. Yes. Um, for you, who are seeing this for the first time, how old were you then? I was about 27. 27? Yes. Were you sad or you were also part of those who felt they deserved it? These people have run down the state in various forms. I, I, I was very sad. You were very sad? I mean, I couldn't believe how human beings could be shot like that. But I'm told that at that time, people were demanding, calling for the blood to flow. People were insisting that these people are actually run down the state. They have been corrupt. They, 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 they basically are the problems that we were facing at the time? Um, well, there were lots of people, especially the students at that time, oh, okay. shouting, uh, let the blood flow. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it wasn't like people were marching on the streets and shouting, let the blood flow. I see. These were, were slogans oh, okay. that were being published in the newspapers, mm -hmm. and a few people um, shouting, let the blood flow. But I don't think they really meant that people should be tied up and shot. You don't think so? No, I don't I, think I, so. In this seat that you occupied, the PNDC Secretary for Youth and Sports said the same thing, mm -hmm. that they really were not demanding blood, mm -hmm. and even though it became a popular slogan for people to cheer along. Do you think it was misconstrued by their leaders at the time? That because um, they wanted the former to president Rollins' justification is that there was a massive clamor for these, and they would have done worse things if some of the people were not sacrificed? Massive <laughs> clamor. Massive clamor, I, I don't know. Now, because we were, we were in town going okay. about our business, mm -hmm. and we were hearing stories from Makola and people being maltreated. But um, I don't think it was as, as has been narrated. Maybe eyewitnesses who saw it. Okay. Yes, but... I, I don't, massive clamor, like people coming out and demonstrating and urging him to do it. I don't think that is what is. I think they had their own plans. Oh, okay. Yes. Because even on the day, mm -hmm. the, 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 the speed and uh, the way the things were was carried out compared to the previous 10 days, th there seemed to be some confusion. Oh, really? Yes. There seemed to be some confusion. That's, uh, so when we, we saw the helicopter and the, the rush with which these things were done, we, we were wondering. But former President Roll is there? I don't think so. He was not in the helicopter? I don't know. Um, the account of Josai says that people were cheering um, JJ, JJ, no, when the helicopter passed. No, no. no not at all. No, not this does not happen. No. Okay, now we didn't know what was what was, was going really to happen. happening. Yes. I'm talking about those people who were there, who were witnesses close to the incident, not those like of who were passers by. No, I'm talking about the people who were close to it. I think that most of the witnesses mm -hmm. were commuters. Oh, I see. Yes, because it had not been they announced. They had not gone out of their way to go and watch that. No, it had not been announced. Mm -hmm. I think if people masked up, it was after the executions. And th that's an interesting. Now, this was the Kalabule moment. You've heard of the word Kalabule. Yes, yes. How did it pan out? How was it like? Like Kalabule? Yes. I think goods were in short supply. Okay. Like 
Sergeant Akanapuare said. Mm -hmm. And it was basic economics. Those who had it had hoarded, oh, okay. and they were selling it at um, high prices. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there was a regime of controlled prices, okay, yes, government price prices. Yes. There were laws to promote that. Yes, but the goods on the market were not enough. Oh, okay. So those who had it hoarded them. Everything from even petrol was being hoarded. People go and queue with gallons and then they buy the petrol and then they take it to their homes. And those who knew would go there in the night and then fill their tanks. Oh, people were running their full tanks at home. At home, yeah. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very terrible situation. Oh, yes, yes, mm. yes. It was terrible. So on the market, Things like sardine, milo, corned beef, pitchards were all being hoarded and then sold at higher prices. That, that, that was the, I don't know where the term came from, but oh, okay. it was generally understood to mean that hoarding the and extortions that extortions, happen yes. as a result of having yes. to sell in your, yes. uh, your, your goods at a higher, at price, a higher price, not at a controlled at price, a control in, price in this case. Yeah. And and was this were widespread? Was that across the oh, country? Oh, yes, it was widespread. I see. Yeah, it had almost come to be accepted because if you didn't want to pay more, then you would not get what what you wanted what you wanted yeah did the beatings stop it stop the calabule yes mm. i think to an extent but the goods were not on the market there was a general shortage still yes even it wasn't like uh, goods came in uh, when the revolution started it for how long does this last um, I think it continued for quite some time uh, um, until maybe when the when 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 the handover to the civilian government happened, mm -hmm. and then things started getting normal. I think this is that, that is when things started uh, easing. Sorry, are, to, are you talking about eighty one? Uh, no, no, no. Well, uh, seventy nine. You know, the, the June oh, in September, of course, it was in September, September that they handed over yes, to the Lehman yes, administration. Yes. So things eased up around the time. That is after the handover, if I oh, can remember. Oh, okay. That's that when uh, systems started improving. Yes. But we are told of a huge hunger situation of famine in this country in eighty one too. Yes. After eighty one, mm -hmm. then there was. Um, I don't think it was famine. It was. Like, uh, goods went short again. Petrol was not flowing, petrol shortages and things like that. And people had to queue um, to buy king cake. For, for these products. Now, yes. I, I'll beg of you to give me a second. I'll go to the phone lines and get to speak to Major Retard Bwachijan. Koju Bwachijan is one of those that orchestrated and delivered the June 4th uprising. He's been recently referenced in the statements of the former President Rawlings to Major Reader as a man who was a coward, as a man who ran into the bush when he was needed more urgently, and as a man who spent quality time running down the reputation and engaging in fabrication against the former President Rawlings. You're welcome, Major Retard. Um, Hello. Major Boatijan, can you hear me? Not very faintly. Okay, so Major Bwatijan, if you can hear me, I'm sure by now you are clearly aware of the allegations that have been hurled against you by the former President Rawlings, from being the coward to staying in the bush when you were needed more to fight for the people, and also being a man engaging in fabrications against the former President Rawlings. What say you thou? No, you are, you, you are, you are very faint. Yes, sir. I can't hear you properly. Well, I'm sure we should be able to fix that and get back to you on this one. But my guess, as I'm still having here, is Bob Kumse. Bob Kumse witnessed what was perhaps one of the most terrible incidents. And if later on you watch the crimes that shook the nation, you would really get to appreciate what happened in on the 26th of June, 1979. But let me go back to the phone lines and see if I can get a better line to Major Bwachijan. 
Um, yes. Major Rita Bautista, can you hear me? Uh, it's getting better now. Oh, well, we thank God that there's a better line to communicate on. I was asking a direct question about what the former President Rollins is saying about you. His <laughs> claim is pretty simple. There are, there are, there are two parts to it. Yes. He, he said something about, about four or five days ago. Yeah. And I responded. Yes. I didn't think that was a coward and all of that. Yes, that, never, that you ran into the bush wh when you were needed more. And that is he, is you are engaged in fabrications against him. I, now you understand why it means for people to fabricate things against him, eh? You, you go and use Koyoli to fabricate things about me. The man is dead. So you can't even verify the truth of it. You understand? Mm -hmm. Oh, that is a trademark. Now, all I'm saying is that um, we are approaching an election year, and we need to be more circumspect about things that we say for and against the party, especially where we have come from. So, and the, uh, my position is that I have, he tackled me personally. If you watch, I never made any reference to our record at all. You know, so he, he attacked my person, and I responded attacking his person. And these things can go on and on and on and on. I, I get and, you. I understand that. But he's dismissing the claims that, I mean, his, uh, his lieutenant courses, he failed, and you had to help him out. He insists that all of these promotions were done on merit and by his own competence, without any aiding from you. I, 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 I. I leave him to his conscience because he failed promotion exams five times. He did. The records are there. And I had to use my discretion as an examiner to beef up his last point to, to pass him. You know, and if he thinks, he, if he wants to deny it, fair enough. There, there's nothing anybody can do about that. But, you see, I am paying him back in his own coin that, in, 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 the, in what we have done, it's dangerous to concentrate on personality uh, 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 record rather okay. than activist record. What want to make an I, I, I My last question to you is, in fact, all of this is just because people are putting in perspective what really happened at June 4th and where you people were involved in. The claim is that it is a complete failure Mindful of the aftermath of that, that at first December happened, that the revolution is currently uh, what we have uh, find ourselves. Incidentally, have you read my book, Call to Duty? Certainly. And what do you think about it? I have detailed, give a detailed account of the rationale for the executions, for instance. Eh? From the Criminal Code 1966, Section 12B. Uh, through all the constitutions, including his own current constitution, right? Yeah. And people were telling a kangaroo trial and all that until I appeared at the Reconstitution Commission, and that died. You see? So uh, if, if anybody has any reason to make it that, I will refer them to go and read the book. You understand? Finally, uh, there's the question that's on the minds of many. When you look back, was the June 4th uprising worth it? It was more than worth it in the sense that the, the, the criminal code, the treasonable offense that we used to execute the generals. We were, I was in the secondary school from three when it was enacted. You understand? And it has been codified in all the constitutions since then, up to the current 1992 constitution. The only thing is that you cannot, if somebody is holding hold, somebody hostage on the rooftop with a gun to the head, head of, the, of, of, of the victim, you can't go and hold a Bible in front of you and say, come down and I'll pray for your soul. <laughs> you understand? I, I get you. And you need to use the force to meet the force. And the trouble is that even though the laws are ripped full of uh, 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 provisions against treasonable offense, high treasonable offense, this enforcement has always been a problem. You see, 
because the guy who has broken the law has a gun. You don't have it. How do you enforce the law against him? What major so, regard, Bartijan? I, I, I just wish we could continue, but the same time is up, and I need to wrap up now. I need to thank you. After the airing of Scars of the Revolution this evening at 8 p.m., I'm sure we'll try and find some more time to put into proper perspective events and happenings of the past. But for now, thank you so much for joining us from your hometown. Well, thank you so much once again, Major Retard. And, and let's come and conclude with you. I think before then, yeah, uh, the names of the six yes. were executed. Mm -hmm. Um, Air Vice Marshal Abuache, yeah, yeah, Abuache, General Roger Feli, yeah, Major General Robert Kote, yeah, General Kwesi Akufu, Rear Admiral Joy Amedume, okay, and General Akwesi Amankwa Afrifa. It was on the one o'clock news, okay. GBC, the, that we got to know that these were the people, these were the people that were being that executed were, at the time that you yeah, saw it yes, live, yes. Mr. Kumsi, thank you so much for joining us here today, and I appreciate you coming into our studios here. Folks, that's where we end today's edition of Upfront. Many thanks to you for being our guest. Stay tuned, Thank because you. after the news, in the next hour, you surely will be having the all-important scars of the revolution be aired here.